All right, everybody knows I'm not a Korean car, Hyundai, Kia fan. The guy didn't buy it though. He's had this Tucson for a little over a year and a half now and realized he's leasing it because he was gonna get a Toyota RAV4, but there were two things that bothered him. The first was this Tucson has a nice screen integrated with the dash where the Toyota had that one that looks like somebody stuck an iPad there and he hated it. And the other thing he hated was the price. He's leasing this. 210 bucks a month. The RAV4s, they were 350 bucks a month and up. And you're not gonna believe this, but it's the truth. This was a new model that just came out. The saleswoman at the Hyundai dealer told him, no, don't buy this car, lease it. She said, it's a new model, things might go wrong. You won't have to worry about anything because you're leasing. And if you like it later, you can always pay off the lease. And he's got another year and a half left on the lease. And he just told me, I doesn't know, he'll probably get rid of it and get something else. As a compromise vehicle, mainly because of the price, and he really hated that iPad looking thing in a Toyota, I tend to agree. It's intrusive to the design of the car. And it's kind of annoying that you got this bump sticking up there. I gotta agree with him that. But considering that he gets 39 miles a gallon on the highway when he was driving at regular speeds, good gas mileage, you didn't have to worry about the repairs because he doesn't own it. He's leasing it. Black and silver interior. We'll start it up. It's got cool looking digital dashes, I'll say that. It's got a nice display. The sunroof. Collision avoidance system. Air conditioned seats. Different speeds. Heated seats. Different speeds. Both sides. Easy to get to. Listen, anytime you want to look back, just push your back camera. There's a the view. You don't have to be in reverse. Handy little thing. I even like the cool rolling volume for the radio. Look at it. Really easy to use. And when you turn the thing off, watch. Happy music. Now when you consider he's only paying 210 bucks a month to lease it. Hey, nice looking vehicle. It's got a lot of room for the back seat. Has heating and air conditioning in the back seat. It's comfy back here. You can easily get three people in there. Or have a nice armrest with cup holders. Now, this is a two-wheel drive version, but he follows my videos. He lives on the East Coast. You put snow tires on the front of this thing, he doesn't get stuck anywhere. If you do get an all-wheel drive vehicle and one tire goes bad, you gotta buy all four. That's a lot of money every time you get a flat tire. The all-wheel drive systems, all the tires have to be almost exactly the same size, because if they're different, then that messes with the computer systems. They're all run by computers. It ends up burning out the transfer cases. It can wreck differentials. They want to have them all the same size. So if you really want to take care of your vehicle and you have an all wheel drive vehicle, every time a tire goes out, boombo, you got to buy four of them and they have to be the same exact tires too. And generally with the way that four wheel drive vehicles are set up, the tires are very expensive tires. I had a guy the other day bring one, it cost him a thousand bucks every time he's got to swap the tires out. Think about that. Do you need to have a four wheel drive vehicle? Hey, this is the East Coast, right? It snows. He has no problems with snow tires on this thing. It works perfectly fine. You pay less for it and you're gonna get better gas mileage because the four wheel drive systems, every single one of them gets worse gas mileage because of the weight, the extra drive wheels. The only vehicle that goes further with four wheel drive are the fancy Teslas that have a motor on each wheel. But that's electric motors run by computers. It's a completely different thing than a gasoline version all wheel drive vehicle. So let's look under the hood. It's a 2.5 liter four cylinder GDI engine. It's got 181 horsepower, which isn't too bad. Not turbocharged, which is good. So you got a 2.5 liter engine, which has a big enough size engine. It's not a little bit of tiny 1.4 or 1.1 liter three cylinder turbo. It's big enough. 2.5 liters is a decent sized engine and it's hooked up to an eight speed transmission. Now the man may be very lucky, but we don't know yet because you never know how they expand it. But Hyundai is just recalling a bunch of these eight speed automatic transmissions for an electric pump that doesn't work right. It charts out and it doesn't go anywhere. But if you look at the list here, it's got Santa Fe, Sonata, Velostar, Elantra, Kona, and Santa Cruz, but it does not have the Tucson. They didn't recall this one, so maybe this one is slightly different. I don't know. All I know is they're recalling some of those, but on the other hand, the man was smart. 
because he leases this thing. He doesn't own it. If the transmission did go out, it's not on his watch. They would have to fix it under warranty anyway. Don't buy it, she said, and she was a saleswoman. Lease it in case there's a problem. So he doesn't have to worry. But say you're gonna buy a used one, get the VIN number of the car. The easiest one's right in the windshield right there. And go to the National Highway Traffic Safety Association.gov website, and you just type in the VIN number. And if there's a recall, it pops up, and if it says, well, they're recalling for the transmission, you say, well, I'm not gonna buy that one used. Buy something else, right? That's one advantage of leasing it with things the way they are today. 210 bucks a month is actually a really good deal that he got for this, like you say. He wanted the RAV4, he didn't like the ugly screen, but he also didn't like the 350 bucks plus, you know, that's almost twice the 210 he's paying. So you really can't argue with that. You see, his engine compartment's dirty, but he doesn't care. He listens to me, don't put water in cleaning, you can ruin the electronics. You don't live under there, that picnic, so who cares? And it does have a dual system, it has GDI injectors, and it also has port injectors. We'll pull off the stupid beauty cover. You can see it has both kinds of injectors. These are regular fuel injectors here. You can't see the GDIs, they're hidden inside. So it's not an engine, you gotta worry about carbon buildup on the intake valves. It's got a system to solve that. You know, there's a lot of technology in it, especially in that eight-speed automatic transmission. That's how he actually gets better gas mileage then it's rated at low highway speeds. But it also gets in the teens when you're in town, because understand one thing about just about every SUV out there. They're relatively high up in the air. They're relatively non-aerodynamic. So they're always gonna be pretty much gas hogs when you're driving in town, because you're stopping and going, stopping and going. And like all modern cars, it's LED, and it's got a beautiful front, I mean. It's an impressive lighting system. So let's take it for a spin. And the owner just told me, he thinks it's, Maybe a little crappy car, but he really likes the way it looks. It's got a nice look. Now, he never uses the manual shifting. He just puts it in drive and drives it. First thing I notice is it's incredibly quiet in this thing. It's, it's not loud at all. That's just the wipers going up and down because it's raining. It went over the hump pretty good. And I got to say, it's pretty comfortable to drive around it. Realize sometimes an insane car market like the one that exists today, where people are paying more for used cars than new cars, sometimes a lease like this is not that bad of an idea because you can play it by ear. And believe me, if a year and a half from now, the big recession is going full swing and he decides he's gonna buy it, he'll probably get a pretty good buyout price on at least because they'll be stuck with tons of them and they won't know what to do with them. It does have the automatic shut off and the owner just said he hates it and so do I. <laughs> it's so annoying, you know? It really is, it's just annoying. There's something annoying about it. And here we go. Hey, this thing's got plenty of get up and go. Considering it's not turbocharged, hey, it's got a lot of oomph to it. And you can see it's got all the automatic lane departure stuff. And really, hey, it's slippery out here. This thing handles the corner. There's no slippage at all. It's a nice handle little vehicle. Now he was telling me he shuts off the automatic shut off sometimes. And what should he do? So I told him, shut it off all the time. You got to do it after you start the car because it's automatically on. 90-something percent of the wear of your car is, guess what, when you start the car. They claim they have better bearings, rings, you name it, but it's baloney. All the vehicles that have stop-start system, I see the engines wear and they end up burning oil too early. You got a system like that, my advice is just turn it off. So there we have it, a new Hyundai Tucson. And as the guy says, Eh, it's kind of crappy, but I like the way it looks. I like the features it has, and he's leasing it for only $210 a month. The Toyota that he wanted was $350 up per month. A lot of difference. Maybe he'll keep it, maybe he won't keep it, but at that price point for what he got. Now, of course, what I'm wondering, as I showed you earlier, is that eight-speed automatic transmission is being recalled on a bunch of them. It didn't include the Tucson yet, so maybe that'll have a problem, but he doesn't have to worry about it because he's leasing it. As everybody knows, I'm not really a big fan of leasing, but in this case, I am a big fan of leasing. We have what's usually a nemesis to me, a BMW. It is a 2021 M440i. It is an extremely fast car. He bought it secondhand with low mileage. You can see it's a beautiful car. He just had it detailed. He just had it done by Q Car Care, and you can see, it made it pop. It's a real ceramic. They don't just dribble stuff on. They spray it on. I mean, look at that paint. 
It's insane. And as we look inside, they did the leather over to us. Oh, it's unbelievable. The black with the blue stitching. It is a beautiful car. This is one of the two reasons he got it. He loved the color, he loved the car, and under the hood. It's got a double pull latch. They don't want you sneaking in. Now it is an ultra dependable BMW. Six cylinder engine, eight speed transmission. ZF makes the best transmissions in the world. This is one fast little car. Now I understand one thing. This is a driver's car. The man who owns it has never been married, doesn't have kids. He takes ultra care of this thing. But the detail that was done now, he doesn't want to wax a car himself and have to get all the little waxings off with Q-tips because he really wants it to look good. So he paid that company to do it. Now he doesn't really have to do anything for years other than wash and clean. This isn't the usual ceramic coating where somebody sells you a little bottle for 50, 60 bucks, wipe it on. No. This is a spray treatment. They had the car for three days doing it. Now, he wanted something that you can drive every day and also drive seriously if you want to go fast. So, as you can see, this thing has sports suspension, comfort suspensions, Eco Pro with adaptive and auto high. You can also turn the traction control on or off. You can turn parking aids on and off. Of course, it's got very fancy backup and side view camera. Today, it shows even when you open a door how much space you have so you don't hit anything. If something's on the side camera in the sky watching you i don't know how they do that stuff but it's kind of amazing it's of course it's super comfortable but it's really the engine which has a start button down here i turned the radio off and look the radio is a regular on off button and a dial hey i like it simple to use right but it's the engine hey that's what people go for and the interesting thing is it's a hard driver check it out coming over here on the highway he got 37.0 miles per gallon. Now it went down because we're idling, wasting gas. So let's turn it off. Those of you like sunroofs, it's got sunroof too. Uh, I really don't care for sunroofs. But plenty of room in the back, even though it's only a two door. I warned you, engine compartment hot. Open carefully. Reminds me of an old customer of mine with a BMW. She unfortunately didn't know that much about cars and she opened her BMW hood when it was overheating. She opened the radiator cap and it burnt her all over her face, her arms. So I guess maybe BMW owners have to be warned about stuff like that. <laughs> I mean look, even the inside is painted beautifully. German quality. These are made in Germany by Germans. Even though they're low profile tires, they're not too low profile tires. There's not any blowouts in them yet and they handle quite well and they ride really good if you want to put it in the nice smooth ride mode. You put it in the sport mode, it's got a rough ride and you can drive like a maniac. But you want it smooth, just push comfort. Then you got comfort ride. Now the owner wasn't even looking for one of these things when he went in a dealer. They were servicing his car. He said, let me try one of those out. Well, he tried it out immediately. He wanted to buy one. But he bought it used and saved a bunch of money. He listened to his father who also happens to be here today with a Hyundai we're going to check out, a new Hyundai. But his father told him years ago, don't ever get a motorcycle, you kill yourself because the father had motorcycles. He even had one of those infamous 750 Kawasaki two-stroke death machines and his father's got the scars to prove it. So he listened to his father and he never got a motorcycle. So he likes fast cars instead, which are a lot safer than fast motorcycles. Now he's got one big problem with his car though and that's this. He just wants to go to work but people always want to race them in the car, right? And it is a raceable car. There's no arguing that, but it's an everyday driver too. I like the glow in the dark car. Look, there's the car. The hood's open. You open the door. Ooh, look, now the door glows. Well, I can play with that all day long. It goes up to 200 miles an hour, but it does have a speed limiter, 155. He said he hasn't taken it that fast. He's only gone like 135, so plenty fast enough for what anybody needs to drive down the road. I mean, let's face the facts. Now, there aren't that many cars out there this fast that you can actually get 37 miles a gallon. He had it 40 on the highway, but then he had to take some back roads and went down to 37. Phenomenal for a vehicle that has this speed with a six cylinder engine that are notorious for lasting forever. It's the inline BMW 6, proving that you can still make a driver's car with an inline 6. Now, back in the day, people were saying, no, oh, this is too small. Well, now it's a big engine because everybody's going to fours and threes. So this engine just keeps rolling along. They had a little power here. This is a single turbo. So let's take it for a spin and see what it does. Look at these fancy seat belts. Watch. We'll take it off. Now watch what happens when we close the door. It comes out. Look at that space age. You must be comfortable in your BMW. We'll lock it up. Then it goes back in place. That is cool. At least it is as long as it still works. There's a nice size glove box. Real comfy armrest. He's added a radar detector. Smart moving a car this fast. Now we'll check out this beautiful backup system that this thing has. Here we go. 
And you notice, it's moving as we do. <laughs> Although I do have to say, the sky is a false color. <laughs> it doesn't look that blue. Now, we've got it on the nice suspension, and this thing is riding smooth on these horrible Rhode Island roads. Now we're gonna put it in sport mode. And I can fill the bumps now. I'd leave it in this mode for the way we're going for a drive though. And here we go. Let's listen to that motor. Ah, what a sound. And we gotta slow down. And it's slowing itself down. It's got that BMW six cylinder noise. And hey, it's not obnoxious like Ferraris and stuff, but it shows you mean business. And you listen to that downshift. Is that ZF eight speed? That's a phenomenal transmission. You can drive it any way you want. There we go. Whee! And that's with one turbo. Imagine what it would do with two turbos. It does make it a little bit faster, but it's insanely fast anyways. So maybe that's overkill. One interesting thing is you heard the noise. That's why it was in sport mode. When you put it in comfort mode, not only does it ride better because it changes the suspension, but it quiets the car down because it's got little electronic stuff on the back that when you go to sport, it opens it up more for a wide open exhaust. And then when you go into the comfort, it quiets it down. So if you live in the hoi polloi neighborhood, you can come in quiet. And then when you leave, you can be loud. <laughs> now this is also a 48 volt mild hybrid so that's where you get the zip and that's how you can get 37 miles a gallon and he got 40 on the highway until he started driving on the road their bmw six-cylinder engine they're gonna last a long time they're not gonna fall apart now granted these cars are for select people who want a car like this they want something that's got all wheel drive phenomenal gas mods all kinds of power beautiful looking car it's his baby he's gonna take care of it it's not a car for everyone it's a driver's car but he's single never got married doesn't have any kids he really takes care of his vehicles so yeah as this thing gets old it's going to have a lot of complex problems especially being a hybrid but got very few miles on it from my experience with these things they generally don't start falling apart till they get well over 100 something thousand miles on them and since it's only one turbo and not two that's half the price when you got to replace that so if you're looking for something that can get gas mods and have power and you don't care about spending some money now he did care some about spending money because he bought it used saved himself quite a bit of money buying it used right and if you do any kind of maintenance yourself you're gonna save yourself a ton of money but realize this is a mild hybrid bmw turbo there's a lot of stuff that nobody but a bmw mechanic is going to really mess around with it's got all the high-tech features he wanted everything he wanted in a car he pretty much fell in love with the thing when he saw it and he had to buy it and hey he got what he paid for so far i mean it's a screamer it goes fast it gets great gas mods it's a beautiful looking car it is a bmw they're very expensive to fix they're very expensive to buy they're very expensive to maintain but hey if it's your baby and that's what you want to do there aren't that many of these things going out there but they sell every single one of them that they make is a 2024 Jetta GLI. Everybody knows I'm not a Volkswagen fan, but I'll show the pluses and minus, and the owner is totally honest about it. Now, it comes with a four-year, 50,000-mile warranty, but the guy who bought it's no fool. He paid 1,900 bucks for the Volkswagen 100,000-mile 10-year warranty because he knows it's a Volkswagen, right? He likes it. It's zippy, and he paid $28,000 for it, so it's a relatively low price car these days now you might wonder why people still buy Volkswagens right are they all crazy well maybe they're crazy to some extent but for $28,000 to get a zippy car like this with the six-speed manual and a turbo that really hauls down the road for that price you know and they do handle well that's how they sell these things just the plain jettas this is a fancy gli and it's an anniversary edition too but just the plain jettas they've sold millions of them because they don't cost much and they're pretty zippy now he was smart he bought the warranty because as we look under the hood the baby's only got six thousand miles but he burned in a little oil he had to add oil to it and fuel rail was rattling and Volkswagen had to fix that free and believe it or not they also had to replace one of the CV boots because it ripped and the grease leaked out 
No, quality control. These are made in Mexico, realize that. Yeah, <laughs> getting that extra warranty was probably a smart move. Look at all the plastic. <laughs> the intake's plastic. There's plastic everywhere. And I guarantee you between now and 10 years from now, if he still has it under warranty, a bunch of this plastic stuff's gonna start breaking. That's what happens with Volkswagens. Door handles, motor parts, they make stuff out of plastic. To build a car that's as fast as this and fun to drive and be able to sell it at a profit for $28,000, of course, you know they're making it in Mexico because the labor's cheaper, there's something there. But there's an awful lot of plastic parts in there that are gonna break when it gets older. I mean, hey, the CV boot already broke. <laughs> They had to insulate the fuel rail, you know, and it's only got 6,000 miles on it. And even the owner said, you got to get that warranty because, hey, they'll break the bank if you keep them any length of time and don't have a warranty on them. It's got over 225 horsepower, got a turbo on it. It's plenty zippy enough. You get an engine, you put a turbo on, it's going to wear out faster, but then again, he's got a 100,000 mile 10 year warranty on the engine. So if the turbo blows up, the engine blows up, Volkswagen's going to have to fix it for free. And let's face it, it's already burning oil now, so odds are he's going to cash in on that engine warranty maybe one or two times <laughs> between now and 10 years or 100,000 miles. <laughs> Understand, there's a price to pay to get a lot of power out of an engine like this. They're notorious for being oil burners as they age. That's just because the turbos and the way Volkswagen makes their engines, they're zippy, but they all tend to burn oil. His friend's got one of those Audi two liters and he says he puts a quart of oil in it practically every time he puts gasoline in it so but his friend likes the audi too because they're zippy cars and this is a gli 40th anniversary i mean look it's beautiful it's got nice really comfortable seats six-speed manual transmission and actually quite a bit of room in the back seat so uh, we'll check the trunk Okay, it's holding on up and goes. Hey, for a sporty car, look at that. And that's with the seats off. There is a lot of room in this trunk. And the Germans are normally relatively conservative with their paint setups. And I mean, it's a nice gray. It's really nice gray with black trim. Nice wheels. Now he does complain. It's got crappy hand cooked tires. <laughs> As he said, what do you expect when you pay 28 grand for a car? You're not going to get really fancy tires. When these wear out, he'll put better tires on them, right? He's using these. You drive them until they wear out, then put better ones on. There's always something going on if there is a price differential. Take an analogy like Subaru. Subarus make decent cars, but lately they've been really cheapening them down. Instead of putting on regular gaskets, on the valve covers, they're using silicone glue, and then when it leaks, you gotta pull the engine out, replace the two sets on each side, which is a real pain in the butt. Now, mind you, they don't do it till they get 100 something thousand miles, but still, to sell the Subarus at the lower price they sell them, you get somewhat lower quality. And in this case, they just put lower quality tires on. You can change that anytime you want. So, let's take a look inside. Okay, we'll sit inside, and man. These seats are comfy. Got the push button start. But Zippy and he's a young guy driving fast. He's still got 31.3 miles a gallon driving it. Very nicely integrated screen. Not some ugly thing that's stuck on. I gotta say, it's got a good design. Six speed gearbox for zooming along. And of course, it's got electric parking brake. They all do. And you can change the various modes. Custom driving mode. You can have eco, comfort, normal, sport. Of course, we'll put it on sport because I'm driving it. And ergodynamically, it's set up nice. The heating AC is all just down here. Simple to do. You don't have to keep guessing about 8 million things to set. It's all just simple at your fingertips with actual clicking dials. Not some stupid thing that you got to keep pushing computer buttons actual clicking dials i like that backup camera looks pretty good nice wide angle you get a good view if anybody's near you it even says look safe to move <laughs> doesn't have a sunroof which is fine with me i think they're stupid anyway of course, it's got a very smooth idle modern technology it makes four cylinder engines idle nice and smooth you look a manual c I can move it back, I can move it forward i don't have to worry about electronics braking so we got sport mode 
put it in reverse, and here we go. Now here we go on the world's worst roads, Rhode Island, at least the United States' worst roads, and we'll see how it handles these bumpity things, and really, quite well for a small wheelbase car like this. And I've got it on uh, sport mode, I don't even have it on comfort mode. These are nice handling cars, there's no arguing that. That's how they sell them. So here we go up the hill, and we'll see how zippy this thing is. Here we go. Nice and zippy, especially when that turbo kicks in. Hey, this thing's fun to drive. <laughs> Not fun to fix, but it certainly is fun to drive him with this warranty. He didn't really have to worry about anything as long as he doesn't run into something. <laughs> nice stable stopping. I gotta say, they're a whole bunch of fun to drive around. There's no arguing that. Just make sure you get the warranty if you buy one brand new and don't have to think about anything for 10 years or 100,000 miles. Steering wheel, it doesn't just look good. It's not just form, it's function too. It's just the right size for doing some serious driving. And the power assist is phenomenal. You don't feel any kind of lag. It doesn't oversteer or understeer. It's a fun car to drive. And I like the one I tried out the other day that the guy only paid two grand for. This one doesn't backfire. <laughs> it just goes. No popping on this one. <laughs> now the gauge is here. Oil temperature, everything's set up. It's a nice car for zipping around in $28,000. Well, you must have been driving it hard because now, look at me, I was driving it hard. He was driving it harder than me. Now he's getting 39.6 miles a gallon. Now, an interesting sideline here is it's a turbo, but you're running on regular gas. Look regular you don't need to put high test in a power and gas mileage and you can use the cheap gas the technology is there today that they can run turbos and fast engines on regular gasoline you don't need to buy something that's got to run on premium gas now a lot of companies actually lie about it and say they have to run on premium i've seen tons of people with acuras they never put premium and they run perfectly fine now they're going to lose a few horsepower granted like the mustang ecoboost 4 it's like 340 or something with high test and then it loses about 40 horsepower with regular gas but this runs on regular gas it's all he's running it and it runs perfectly fine so this is what you get with a brand new Jetta GLI fun to drive but I mean I'm thinking 6,000 miles and it's really starting to burn oil a good thing he bought the warranty but if I had a car like that I have cars that are 30 years old and don't burn oil you know this thing's only got 6,000 miles and the cv boot grease came out they had to replace that it was under warranty of course but that just kind of shows you it's not perfection quality by any stretch of the imagination but it is fun to drive he's not gonna have to worry about anything for 10 years or 100,000 miles so what the heck for 28,000 bucks something that's this zippy and gets gas mods like that that's how they sell these things volkswagen has sold cars in the United States for a long time because they're zippy, they get good gas mileage, and most people, they hope they don't break. <laughs> Once that have had the Audi two liter turbo, they understand they break and they burn oil. Generally, they don't buy another one, right? <laughs> But with a warranty, and I would never buy one of these cars without a warranty. I don't care. And this isn't some BS warranty company. This is through Volkswagen. So if the engine tranny blows, they're going to have to replace it. They, they have no way to get out of it. You don't mind spending that kind of money. And the warranty was only like 1900 bucks extra. It's definitely worth it. They're a lot of fun to drive. They're nice looking cars and they are zippy. That's why they sell them to people. These aren't cars that somebody who's gonna buy a Corolla or a Toyota Camry are gonna buy. They want something that's gonna run forever. They don't care too much about too much acceleration. These, they can be a lot of fun. Yeah, they can fall apart, but with a warranty, hey, <laughs> if you could be like the guy that came over here the other week with the GLI that he only paid a couple thousand dollars for and then fixed it up himself if you're mechanically inclined. I mean, this guy even rebuilt the engine and replaced the transmission. So you gotta be pretty mechanically inclined. Maybe down the line, when he gets tired of this, some guy will end up buying it and do something like that. But if you wanna get one of these things, basically, you're better off buying it new 
getting a warranty, and then not having to deal with the Volkswagen dealerships. Because if you know anybody who ever dealt with the Volkswagen dealership, they're like, I'm never going back to the Volkswagen deal. I got to find a German mechanic somewhere else. And there's a lot of guys that work on German cars that don't work at the dealership, know what they're doing. They're going to charge money, of course, but at least you can find some honest guy that isn't crooked as the Volkswagen dealers are. Every time they turn around, they want a small fortune to work on the car. Now, you know what you get with a brand new one. You can decide. You want to spend 28 grand and buy the warranty for an additional 1900? You got to do that. Or maybe you want something plain Jane. This is not a plain Jane car, but the fact that it's a six speed manual transmission, 96% of Americans don't drive manual transmissions. So they've only got a small market, and the people that want a car like this, some of them will be real happy driving this thing around. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.